Hello and thank you for coming back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Bunny Cakes. Um, today I am filming another review video. The book I'm going to be talking about today is Gwendy's Magic Feather. It's a sequel to Gwendy's Magic Button Box, or Gwendy's Button Box, I can't remember the exact title. I reviewed it on my channel a couple years ago when it came out. Um, this is by Richard Chismar with a forward by Stephen King. They work together on the first one, Gwendy's Button Box. I think that's what it is. Well, let me look. I have the internet right here. Why am I not using it? Yes, it's Gwendy's Button Box. So this sequel... Um, it picks up several years after Gwendy has lost the box, uh, and she has now gone through college, and she's a congresswoman. She's in her first year as a congresswoman, and she's experiencing all that at first, and you see a little bit of that process. Um, and a, in that process, uh, she kind of reminds me almost of uh, AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, um, in her experience and the way that Richard talks about her, um, because she seems to be very liberal and that sort of thing. And um, in the book, the president isn't our current Cheeto-in-chief. Um, it's somebody else, but seems to be a similar type of president. Um, primarily, though, the book takes place, it starts where she's at her job, but most of it takes place after um, she goes on vacation because the because Congress has a recess. But just before she, um, just before she leaves, the box comes back. Um, but it's not presented to her in the same way. And while she's dealing with the stresses of the box, she's also going back to her hometown. And um, there have been a string of disappearances and murders in her hometown. And so she's, even though she's on vacation from her main job, she's still a congresswoman and people are expecting her help. So she's working with the police to see what they need and um and she even joins in the search party and stuff and they find some evidence in the case um it's really well written i liked it it definitely keeps the same mood and tone as the first even though this is entirely richard chismar and not the collaboration between stephen and richard that the first one was um and um uh, I liked it. The pacing, for the most part, was good. Towards the end, things picked up a bit too quick. Um, and a couple of things happened that I wish had either had more Lita or there had been more of the book to explain and explore these things more deeply. Um, and I believe I felt the same a similar way about the first one and that I wish it had been longer because the ending felt just a bit rushed. And that's the one thing I didn't like about it. The story was great. The character was well developed. Things were being explained. Um, she was well rounded and all of that and all the stresses she was going through were handled really, really well. But the end, even though it was a good ending, it was like kind of slow moving, slow moving at first compared to the end to where it was like, okay, we're moving slow, we're moving slow, and then everything's wrapped up. Magic. Um, magic show. <laughs> um, there's a couple of people who are going to get that. Most of you probably won't. But I do know of at least one person who just got their entire life for me saying that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, 
it, it was good. I loved it. I think I gave it a four out of five stars on Goodreads. There's a part of me that kind of hopes they do a part three, but it's also not strictly necessary to continue on with Wendy. Maybe we can get a story about how somebody else gets the box, or maybe a story about what happened with the box in between the time the two times that Wendy has the box. Um, but yeah, I liked it. It was good. I just wish the ending had been handled better. It, it just felt so rushed. And like, I was, I, I read this as the ebook version. I read the first book as the, as a physical copy. And so when that one started in, I mean, I knew because I could tell physically that I only had a couple of pages. I typically don't pay all that much attention to my place in, um, in a book while I'm reading it. And this was so short, I read it in one sitting. Um, so like, it was good. It was good. It was good. I was into it. And then, oh, it's over. Mm. So it annoyed me a little bit, even though I loved it. We can be annoyed by the things we love. It's a thing that happens because we're humans and it's okay. Um, but yeah, I liked it. I think I'm going to look into more writing by Richard Chismart because with the first one, I it was good because I couldn't tell that it was written by two authors because a lot of the time you can tell. But I mean, Stephen King does work really well with other authors. He collabs a lot with his sons and with other famous authors and less famous authors and all of that sort of stuff. So he's good at collabing and he's good at picking who he collabs with, but also because they collab so well together, it makes me think that I would probably like Richard's work as well as Stephen King's. I just have to figure that out by taking the time to go find some stuff that he's written by himself and reading it. So that'll go at some point crammed into my ever expanding TBR list as a lot of booktubers and book addicts will tell you my TBR is pretty much my entire bookshelf. Um, there's more books on there that I haven't read than I have. <laughs> um, mostly because after I read books, I tend to give them away unless they really, really mean something to me. But yep. Um, I liked it. It's definitely worth a read. Not necessarily my favorite read of the year, but it's still worth picking up and looking at. Um, but that's all I have. So you guys stay safe and take care of yourselves and be nice to each other and wash your hands and have a good rest of your day. Goodbye. Okay. So I realized I forgot to say this while I was reviewing this. So I'm going to tack this on at the end and then we'll redo the closing. Um, with Gwendy's magic feather, I forgot to mention that bit. There is a point where another possibly magic item from Gwendy's childhood makes a appearance in the book. And it is in the form of a magic feather that she had when she was a child. That was her good luck charm that she lost at some point. And then her dad finds it. And she gives it to her mother who has become ill. And there are seemingly magical effects, but those possible magical effects are possibly tainted by the box as well. And so the t using that object as a title, as the title thing in the book, I wish that had been addressed more, the mystery about what it was and everything. And that's uh, one of the things that comes up in the kind of rush tail end that I wish had been described more. And I had forgotten to talk about that when I initially filmed this video. So I'm talking about it now. This is going to tack on at the end and then um, you'll see it that way. It's there. I just wanted to make sure that was talked about because I thought... That was a little bit weird, and it was one of the bigger plot points that I can talk about that's not too spoilerish that um that I think is going to come up for most people, and it's the best example I can give without giving deeper spoilers, yeah, um but yeah, so that's that, and again, uh, thank you for watching. 
Usually my videos are more put together than this, as you know, but I'm exhausted and it's 20 after 5 in the morning. I'm going to go edit a video so it'll post tomorrow and then I'm going to go to bed. Um, probably. We'll see. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you again for watching. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Social distancing. Have a good day.